All right, we have a Jacobs R755 B2M engine here that is mounted on a Waco YMF5. This airplane has come in for an annual inspection, and during the annual, we discovered that the number three cylinder is leaking compression past the exhaust valve. So we're going to need to pull this cylinder to um, see what the problem is. It may be something as simple as, uh, as lapping the valve back in, cleaning a little carbon off the face of the valve or seat. Uh, it could be something a little bigger, uh, and we might need to actually cut the seat and valve, but we won't know that until we actually get the cylinder off and, and see what we have. So we're going to use this, uh, this airplane to demonstrate uh, cylinder removal and replacement. Um, each of the, the different installations, uh, you'll have a few different challenges. With this particular installation, you can see that we have uh, inner cylinder baffles between the, uh, between the cylinders. Now, those will have to be removed. If you have your uh, Jacobs engine on a Cessna 195, you'll also have inner cylinder baffles, but they'll be uh, attached a little bit differently than, than with the Waco. So we'll need to start by removing the inner cylinder baffles. Uh, we will at least have to remove the section of exhaust that is directly behind uh, the cylinder that we're working on. You'll have to loosen the exhaust on either side, the cylinder either side of the one that we're removing. Uh, in, in this instance, we've removed the exhaust system on this engine because we were doing some other things with it. Um, you'll also notice that this engine, uh, the propeller's been removed. Now, that's not necessary to do a cylinder change, but we had to do some other things uh, to the propeller on this engine, and so uh, we removed it, and it, it makes life a little easier because you don't have a propeller out front to, uh, to get in the way. You come around here, um, you may be able to see that the, the Jacobs engine has what's called a blind spline. Um, there is a hole that is drilled in the crankshaft, Does, isn't drilled all the way through, but um, on some Jacobs engines there's actually a pin there, others it's just the, uh, just the hole, but that is what's called the blind spline. And the blind spline always points towards the cylinder that, whose piston is at top dead center. So um, what we know right now from the location of this blind spline is that this, this piston is at top dead center in the number three cylinder, which we're getting ready to remove. Now what we don't know is whether the piston is at top dead center on the compression stroke. To remove the cylinder, it's not important whether it's uh, uh, on the compression stroke or not, only that it's at top dead center. However, when we reinstall the cylinder and we go to adjust the valves, it will be important that it be at top dead center on the compression stroke. So let's just put it on the compression stroke to start with. Now, why is it important that the, uh, that the piston be at top dead center? It's because we don't want the piston back in the case when we extract the cylinder. If we do, the rings spring out inside the case, and it's very possible to damage the rings and even damage the piston if it isn't uh, fully extended at, uh, at top dead center. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a crankshaft turning bar, which also has a blind spline, and we're going to align the blind spline and the turning bar with the blind spline that is on the crankshaft. And, um, and what we'll do is we'll turn this thing through and while, while we're turning it through, we'll also feel for compression. And when we feel compression, we'll know that we're coming up on top dead center compression stroke. So we'll begin to turn it through, and we'll just feel for compression. Yeah, I'm coming around now on top dead center, but I don't feel any compression. I'm coming back around to top dead center. And there's the compression. If I go past, it begins to suck. So right there is approximately top dead center on the compression stroke. And it's only important that it be approximate. If we were actually timing magnetos or uh, uh, timing the cam, it would be very critical that we be right at top dead center. But uh, with adjusting the valves, if we're within uh, a few degrees of top dead center, we're close enough. So we've, we found top dead center, and um, now I'd like to, to just talk through what we're getting ready to do here with, with the cylinder. Um, the first thing that we'll do is we'll remove the, uh, the rocker covers, 
and we'll remove the uh, valve adjust uh, lock nuts and screws. We'll be able to extract the push rods out through the rocker arms. And then we'll need to take the push rod tubes off. Now this is a place where, um, where we see a lot of mistakes made. Uh, the tool to remove these uh, knurled nuts is not this tool or anything that looks like this tool. Uh, we see many, many knurled nuts just absolutely destroyed uh, by a pair of pliers. Uh, a pair of pliers is the absolute last resort for removing uh, knurled nuts. Uh, if you have to use a pair of pliers and it's the only thing at hand, get a nice thick piece of leather and wrap the knurled nut first and then very carefully remove the knurled nut, uh, being careful not to dig all the way through the leather uh, because it'll just destroy the knurling on these, um, on these aluminum nuts. The much, much better tool is the plumbing strap wrench. You can get a plumbing strap wrench at any Sears store. Uh, very inexpensive tool, very effective tool, and it doesn't damage the knurled nuts at all. So you remove the, the four knurled nuts, uh, pull the, the push rod tubes out, okay? Then we'll, we'll come around, we'll disconnect the uh, cylinder inner drain hoses. Behind the engine, we'll remove our spark plug lead to the rear spark plug. Then we'll use our intake pipe gland nut wrench to remove this intake pipe gland nut back here. We'll cut the safety wire, remove the three cap screws that, uh, that hold the, um, the intake pipe flange to the cylinder, and then we'll be able to extract the intake pipe altogether. Now once we've done that, we've got the cylinder completely free from everything that attaches it all the way around, and we can go after the cylinder base nuts. There are 12 cylinder base nuts located all the way around the cylinder. We'll use our, uh, our cylinder base wrench that we made earlier to remove all those nuts. Now once we've removed those nuts, we'll want to shake the cylinder loose and extract the cylinder from the case about an inch. We don't want to pull it all the way out yet, and we need a friend at this point, so we need somebody to help us, and we'll take a, um, a rag, and we'll, we'll use that rag to cushion the link rod. We don't want to extract the cylinder all of a sudden, have the, the piston come out, the link rod drop down and hit the case. It will damage both the link rod and the case. So we'll use a red rag as a cushion between the link rod and the case, and as we, as we extract the, uh, the piston from the cylinder, um, our helper will lay this rag on the edge of the case and very carefully lay the link rod down on that rag. That way uh, it will cushion everything, there won't be any damage. Okay, let's get some tools together and we will we'll pull this cylinder off and take a look at it, see what's, uh, what's the matter with it and do that repair and then reinstall the cylinder.
we've got our cylinder disassembled here. Um, looking at it, we can see that on the exhaust valve, there's a little portion on the face of the exhaust valve here where it wasn't seating well. And uh, so what we'll do is we will go back, uh, clean the carbon off the valves, lap them back in again, and, um, and reassemble the cylinder to the engine. All right, we've got our cylinder uh, put back together and repaired, so now we're going to reinstall it. Um, we will need a ring compressor, and my personal favorite is the wrinkle band style. It's easy to get off once you've, um, once you've slipped the cylinder on. And uh, so we'll use the, the wrinkle band ring compressor. And basically, uh, reinstallation is just the reverse of, um, of removing the cylinder. The only thing that we'll do that was a little bit different is when we go to retorque the cylinders, we'll do it in an X pattern. So we'll, we'll move from one stud to the stud opposite it, and then from the next stud to the stud opposite it, and we'll, we'll move around in an X pattern as we retorque the cylinder. Uh, the, what I personally like to do is, is retorque the, the cylinder, and then I go around one more time just to verify that I did get them all. So, um, so I'll put the, um, the ring compressor on. Pull our red rag out. It's very important to get the rag out. And then we have to stop and compress that that oil scraper ring at the bottom. And that's all there is to it. Now we can put it back together again.